Hello my friends, we're back for another video of our series on starting an aquarium. Today we'll talk about a part that many people try to ignore, but it's crucial for your fish and their tank longevity. Maintenance. Welcome to BSK Aqua. In this video, we will uh, cover water changes, cleaning the filter, water testing and disease prevention. Maintenance! I thought having an aquarium was just about adding water and forgetting it. Like a set it and forget it thing. Sorry Rick, but keeping an aquarium requires regular attention. Today, we'll make it simple so you can have a healthy and beautiful aquarium for years to come. Let's start with the basics. Water changes. Many people think can, they can just leave the water in the tank without changing it, but that's a big mistake. Wait, can I just let the filter handle everything? The filter does an important part of the job, but it doesn't remove all the waste and toxins. Over time, the water builds up nitrates and other compounds that can be harmful. So, how much water do I need to change? Do I change the whole tank at once? No, Rick. Changing all the water at once would shock the fish. The best practice is to do partial water changes, about 20 to 30 percent of water weekly. This is the best, depending on the number of fish and plants in the tank. So, 20 percent to 30 percent without emptying the whole thing? That's right, Rick. You can use a siphon or a hose to remove the water while also cleaning the bottom of the tank, getting rid of any waste that settles in the substrate. Then add new water which should always be treated with a conditioner to remove chlorine, chloramine and heavy metals. And that new water has to be the same temperature, right? I don't want to shock the fish. Good point, Rick. Yes, the new water should be at the same or very similar temperature to avoid thermal shock. If the temperature uh, changes too much, the fish could get stressed or even sick. Now, let's talk about cleaning the filter, which is the heart of the aquarium. As we mentioned in the first episode, the filter handles mechanical, biological and chemical filtration. Okay, I remember that. But how do I clean it without destroying the heart? The most important thing is to never clean the filter with tap water. Tap water contains chlorine, which kills beneficial bacteria. The best way is to wash the filter media like sponges and ceramics using the water you remove from the tank during the water change. Oh, so I use the dirty aquarium water to clean the filter? That sounds strange. It does, but it makes sense. It helps preserve the bacteria uh, that are essential for the nitrogen cycle. You should clean the filter every four to six weeks, depending on the tank's biological load. But be careful, never clean all the filter media at once. Alternate cleaning the sponges, ceramics and other materials on different weeks, so you don't lose all the beneficial bacteria. And what about the chemical part of the filter? Do I need to change the activated carbon? Activated carbon shouldn't be used for more than four or five days. It's mainly for removing odors, color and medication after treatment. Other than that, I don't recommend using it for longer. Another important part of maintenance is cleaning the glass and decorations. Over time, algae can build up on surfaces, making the tank less attractive and, in some cases, harmful to the fish because of the build-up of organic compounds. Oh, you mean that gross green algae that makes the tank look abandoned? Exactly, Rick. To prevent algae buildup, you can use a brush specifically for aquarium glass or a magnetic scraper. They remove algae without scratching the glass. Can I scrub the rocks and wood too? Yes, but be careful with the type of decoration. You can clean rocks and wood with a soft bristle toothbrush, but avoid using chemicals. Any chemical residue can be toxic to fish. If the algae are really stubborn, you can boil the rocks or wood for a few minutes before putting them back in the tank. And the plants? Do I need to give them a wash too? No, you don't need to wash them, but you should regularly remove dead or unhealthy leaves to prevent them 
uh, from decomposing and polluting the water. Healthy plants help keep the aquarium clean, but dead ones can only cause harm. Now let's talk about something essential, testing the water. It's important to monitor the water parameters regularly to ensure the tank's environment is balanced. Just looking at the water won't tell you if it's contaminated or not. Testing the water, like a lab test for the fish. <laughs> kind of. The main test you should do are the ammonia nitrates and nitrates. These come from the breakdown of fish waste and can be highly toxic if they build up. And what should I look for? Ammonia and nitrate should always be at zero. If either it's present, it could mean the nitrogen cycle is disrupted. Nitrates should be below 40 ppm, but the lower, the better. And how do I test that? Do I need a lab at home? <laughs> no, Rick. There are affordable and easy to use water test kits with reagents that change color depending on the levels of these compounds. You should also test the water pH, which should suit the species you kept in the tank. And what's the ideal pH? It depends on the fish. If you have uh, African cichlids, for example, they prefer slightly alkaline water between 7 and 8.5 pH, while uh, Amazonian fish prefer more acidic uh, water between 6 and 7, for example. The key is to keep the pH stable and avoid sudden changes. Finally, let's talk about preventing diseases. Most fish diseases are caused by us making mistakes and stress the fish or affect their environment, but they can be avoided with proper maintenance and feeding. Diseases? Fish get sick too? Yes, Rick. Fish can suffer from diseases like ick, uh, fungus, parasite, bacteria, uh, fin rot, you name it. Many of these are caused by stress, poor water quality or introducing new fish without quarantine. Quarantine? You mean putting the fish in timeout? Something like that. Whenever you buy new fish, if you can, you should keep them in a quarantine for a few weeks in a separate tank. This allows you to check if they're healthy before heading them to your main tank. And how do I know if the fish are sick? Signs of diseases include white spots, frayed fins, lethargy, loss of appetite, rapid breathing, the key is to act quickly when you notice any symptoms, as disease can spread fast. And what do I do if a fish gets sick? There are specific treatments like medications you can add to the water, but the best solution is always prevention. Keep the water clean, feed the fish a variety of diet and regular water changes to avoid problems. And with that, we've come to the end of another episode. So far, we've covered everything you need to know to start an aquarium journey. From choosing the tank, lighting and decoration, to this episode on maintenance and daily care. Wait, it's over already? I was just starting to get into this. Ah, not quite. Don't you think there's something missing? Hum, the fish! You still haven't talked about the fish! Exactly, Rick! In the next and final episode of the series, we talk about the best fish for beginners in the aquarium hobby. Awesome! I thought you'd never get to the most important part! Fish are important, of course, but not the most important. Remember, the most crucial thing in this hobby isn't just having fish. It's knowing how to care of the water. Without a good water, you wouldn't have healthy fish. Yeah, you're right. This hobby is more about being water caretakers than fish keepers. And now that I know how to handle the maintenance properly, my fish will outlive me, right? If you follow these tips, your fish will have a long and healthy life. And remember, patience is the key in the aquarism. Okay, patience and water changes. I can do that. Well, my friends, thanks for joining us for another episode. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, share and subscribe to the channel for future content. Thank you for your support and we'll see you in the next episode. Please like, comment, share and subscribe.
subscribe. Thank you.